Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome back to CSM editorial video. And today we plan to talk about Open RAN. Now, the first question is, what is Open RAN? Uh, uh, from some, from little understanding that I have, it is really a uh, disintegration of what a network is. Uh, but Anand, who's here with us, uh, has uh, some great explanations and uh, slides which he can help us understand with. So Anand? Uh, what is Open RAN? All right, so um, uh, let me try to explain. As the term, terminology itself says, Open RAN means uh, basically opening up the radio access network. Yeah. So you would have a base station, uh, which is a simple base station, a box which connects to your core network. Yeah. And then if you split that base station into part, you can uh, what that came in the era of 5G, you can apply it to back, uh, other generations also. You can split it in two or three parts actually. It's uh, the remote unit, that's where, uh, to which you can uh, connect the antenna. And then you have the distributed unit and the central unit, okay? And uh, so these are three parts, okay? And the central unit itself, then you can further split into for user, user plane part and control plane part, okay? So this is, uh, the open RAN concept. And then of course you can virtualize them. Yeah. Uh, you can put on uh, any kind of uh, virtual machines. You can, you know, you can run on network function virtualization uh, as it is called, or uh, you can do the Kubernetes or you can go to a serverless, whatever you do. Um, so then you're talking about the virtual RAN part. Yeah, open VRAN uh, that way, yeah. So that is a high level of the split, what you were talking about. And then you can perform some controls and stuff like that because now things are virtualized and are very modular. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a simple explanation of the, what's happening today with open and virtual RAN. Yeah. I'm sure it can be uh, discussed in deeper technical detail, uh, but for people such as myself that just about hit the <laughs> hit the good level uh, highest level of uh, understanding and then beyond that would have gone over my head um so when you say virtualization certainly that opens up uh, many new business proposition uh, which uh, which makes it very exciting the whole 5g uh, uh, 5g era uh, could you t tell us a little more about how the ecosystem has changed uh, what is the value uh, value proposition now? Uh, who are the stand? What are the standards? Where are the alliances coming from? Yeah. So, um, I, 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 in, in this discussion, we won't touch any company names, of course. So, but uh, uh, saying that uh, things are modular, so split. Yeah, that was uh, always the three GPP's idea on how things should be, and then you are uh, making it virtualized and cloud, as you said many companies can come in, you can make each part separately. And therefore operators have an opportunity to, uh, anyone who's operating, be it a private network or, or a network of a mobile operator, uh, they can bring different parts of, uh, of the software from different vendors, put them together, yeah, and then have a, a virtual network. It can, the whole 5G's concept is that way. Yeah, so that's a big change. That means, uh, that could mean that uh, given company that's running the network, the operator, and uh, will have to manage this whole thing, yeah, whole network with all the parties and how they're deployed and stuff like that. And of course, operations, maintenance, everything. Yeah. In terms of uh, uh, industry bodies or uh, specifications body, you want to say, you, you have 3GPP, that's where everything started. That's where the whole specification of 5G came. The split also came from there. Then you have uh, the ORAN, yeah, the, uh, where they are defining in more detail how the split should be, the, product, uh, the interfaces and stuff like that, details of those. And then you have a, a telecom infrastructure project with the Open RAN group there, which is uh, talking about internal of the virtualization part, how they should be uh, defined. And, and then you have a body called ONF with the SD RAN activity as well, uh, which are working on what kind of what kind of uh, services on top and stuff like that can be uh, provisioned. Yeah, that's keeping at the high level how uh, the market with the operators and the vendors can be, and how what are the different industry and uh, standard bodies and stuff like that. 
Yeah. Okay, but then in uh, cybersecurity magazine, obviously, we want to talk about uh, security. And now the way I understand it, if uh, the uh, RAN is split up as Open VRAN was suggested, doesn't that sort of broaden the attack surface? Especially considering that uh, 5G in itself, with uh, probably billions of devices, um, will uh, additionally uh, broaden the attack surface. So what do you think? Well, what, what, what would you say? Is Open uh, RAN or Open VRAN a plus for security or is it negative for security? Yeah, so uh, look, um, that's, uh, that's always a difficult uh, discussion as, as, you, as you do also understand very well and everyone who is listening will understand. I mean, you can have a black box or you can have the box broken in pieces. Yeah. And, and therefore, once you, uh, you, of course, have an opportunity of exposure, but that's the whole concept of 5G to have it have things modular. And then it will, as, as you said, Patrick, it, it will go deep in our society and therefore it's more exposed. Yeah. And different complexities come. So, yeah, OK, there, there, there are chances to attack. But at the same time, uh, uh, all these are being very well defined by different bodies together. Yeah. And that means the protocols for security, the, all the credentials and stuff like that are very well, being very well defined. Yeah. I can go de uh, deeper in that uh, if you guys want to. Or... So, so the basic point I'm saying is that uh, at the end, it is on the design and the deployment and the operations that will keep it secure. Yeah, uh, Be it uh, uh, split the way it is now and uh, defined by 3GPP and then other bodies as open we ran or be it just a one black box saying, hey, this is ran or, or, or the base station. Yeah, so I guess that's something which we uh, see in many areas uh, uh, of, uh, well, let's call it computing. Uh, you know, once you start, you, you have a, a fragmented market with no standards established, but uh, I think we can see uh, from, from my knowledge, at least uh, that uh, with standards being established, things tend to get more secure rather than less secure. So I, mean, I expect that this is something we will also see in 5G. Yep, yep. I mean, uh, look, at 3GP, uh, 3GPP already defined uh, the specifications and quite a bit of details when it comes to 3GPP, uh, you get into bits and bytes level. Yeah. And uh, for this breaking up into virtualization part, uh, how the virtualization world should work, of course, that is not, that was not the job of 3GPP and that's what, where many different bodies are coming in. So uh, maybe I should go a bit deeper. So one thing is that between what I said, uh, this RU and the remote unit, the distributed unit, central unit, you have to secure the interfaces. Yeah? And if you are inside a uh, completely virtualized area, a cloud somewhere, then you, ha you still have to secure the communication path that's going between that if you don't want to call it an interface. Yeah? Um, now, after that, all the, uh, the CU, DU, for example, this uh, central unit will st stay in the edge cloud, for, uh, for example, um, how, or even that you will be in a virtualized situation. How do you secure this virtualized, virtualized uh, uh, environment? Yeah? So from the hardware to the OS to the, uh, if there's a virtualization layer and all the applications. You have to have that security. You have to have a proper identity access management and privilege access management. You have to take care of baseline security, like uh, you know, you should take care. The hardening is there for all of them. These things will keep on coming. You'll have to, before you deploy, you'll have to take care that uh, you have the proper source of uh, getting the logs from all these places, so you can do proper monitoring on the back. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then you have to have a secure orchestration also, so that you can bring things up and down. So. Uh, and to me, uh, that in, in the era that we are in today already, it's, it's not a magic. And therefore, you, you, if you do have to sit down, think of security holistically. And that's what, what I always say. Um, think of all the rules and re regulations, even for, for your government's risk compliance of so physical security and stuff like that, uh, very carefully. Uh, and then you have, a, you have adequate security. Yeah, for the for the whole whole system, uh, open VRAN issues. Just talking about that. Yeah, you can of course have APIs on top to provide a different services. Yeah, uh, but you can secure all of this, and that's what I always recommend. Think of holistic security. Think of all the basics. Yeah. 
So is that where we are bringing in intelligence to the network? Intelligence to the network uh, is, of course, this is the radio access network that's running, and then you have, uh, uh, you can have different applications on top because you're also collecting a lot of data. Then you can provide some kind of intelligence on top. So that's what all these different bodies are talked about. They're also talking about a control part on top of real time, non real time services and how to uh, change things and modify things. Yeah. So, so what you're thinking about bringing AI and stuff as well. Yeah. Sorry, please, Patrick. No, no, I was just uh, um, just uh, uh, saying that this is maybe something we can put up for the next discussion. Uh, you know, uh, because today we focus more or less on the open RAN, uh, but uh, there's definitely other interesting areas to 5G. But uh, what my takeaway is from from uh, um, the open RAN discussion today is uh, essentially um, there will be a lot of challenges, of course, because it's a totally different way of doing mobile uh, networks than it used to be in the past. But on the other hand, uh, you also mentioned that we see all the security tools, all the security uh, possibilities, which we have in the regular IT now coming for 5G. So uh, I'm sure it will also be a, an area of uh, great opportunities. Yep, cannot agree with you more, Patrick. Exactly, and and then you take care of all the specific mobile communication related protocol and the security credentials for them. Yep, but think of security from the beginning. Think of security holistically. Yeah, so yeah, that would be my message. Yeah. Very good. I think uh, that's also some very good closing words. So thank you, Anand. Thank you, Rajiv. And uh, yeah, we'll hope to see all of you the next editorial podcast. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.